The hamstring's muscle group consists of four muscles, three of which can perform both knee flexion and hip extension, and one, the biceps femoris short head, which only performs knee flexion. For this reason, exercise selection for complete hamstrings development should include some form of leg curl. Those who go to a commercial gym typically have access to at least a lying leg curl. However, if you have access to a lying leg curl, remember that other variations still exist. And for those who train at home or in a powerlifting, crossfit, or weightlifting gym without machines, you have to get a little more creative. First, let's discuss the machine variations you might come across. Your standard lying leg curl is the most common option, and using it is pretty straightforward. Like any machine, make sure to set it up so that you have the largest pain-free range of motion you can perform. The pad should be on the lower part of your ankle, and you should be in a stretched but not uncomfortable position at the bottom of each rep. Also, make sure that the rotational center of the cam is in line with the joint you're training, in this case, the knee joint. Other machine variations include standing leg curls and the more common seated leg curl. Setup guidelines for these are the same as they are for the lying variation. Standing leg curls, depending on the design, may allow you to keep your hamstrings slightly more elongated by having your upper body in a lean forward position in hip flexion resting on a pad. When you are in hip flexion, this is like a sit and reach test putting the hamstrings in a more stretched position. Seated hamstring curls exaggerate this position even more, and research has shown that seated hamstring curls provide a stronger stimulus than lying as they train the muscle at a longer length. However, be aware that training a muscle at a longer length also tends to increase soreness, at least initially, before you become accustomed to the movement. Finally, when performing any machine hamstring variation, control the eccentric, lift forcefully on the concentric, and make sure to keep your hips and upper body in a fixed position to better isolate the hamstrings. Don't let your hips rise off the bench during lying leg curls, or let your quads come away from the pad during standing leg curls, or let your butt rise off the seat during seated leg curls. For those who don't have access to machines, there are a couple of options. The first are slider curls. Sliders are discs that have a low friction side and a high friction side, allowing your feet to grip onto them, but allowing the sliders to slide on the floor even on a rug. Lie on your back with your knees bent, place your heels on the higher friction side of the sliders with the low friction side down, and perform curls while holding your upper body slightly off the ground, pushing into the floor with your arms at your side, abs flexed, and glutes tight. Slider curls allow you to perform concentric knee flexion. However, you'll have to push out through your heels to get your feet back into the start position for each rep, as you're using friction to provide resistance rather than gravity. Thus, you'll notice what is supposed to be eccentric knee flexion during the lowering phase is actually concentric knee extension. That's the only downside of slider curls. They don't have much of an eccentric phase. However, if you don't have equipment, you can do Nordic curls to train eccentric knee flexion. Nordic curls are a bodyweight eccentric leg curl. They're challenging, and unless you're very strong, you'll only be able to perform a few reps at first, and you'll only be able to control part of each repetition. Nordics require either a bunched up towel or two knee sleeves stacked on top of one another horizontally or a rolled up yoga mat or similar as a pad to put under your knees. Additionally, you'll need either a partner to hold your ankles or something immobile to wedge your ankles under to hold you in place. A couch or a bed of the right height and weight are both decent options. When performing Nordics, do your best to keep a constant hip flexion angle, your glutes tight, and your torso immobile. Lower yourself towards the floor while flexing your hamstrings, fighting the fall for as long as you can on each rep. Hold your hands out in front of you to catch yourself when you do lose control, then push off the floor with your arms to get back to the start of each rep. As you get stronger, you'll be able to control the descent for longer or eventually for the entire eccentric rep. And if you get very strong, you might even be able to perform the concentric portion of each rep without assisting yourself at all.